people, namaste. I'm back today, finally, to continue my series of lives as I am speaking to my book, Rapture, a guide to sexual and spiritual awakening for women. And I'm going through this book um, for men, addressing a male audience. Let me just adjust my camera a little bit, there we go. So, um, been busy with other things, but I'm back today speaking to chapter 10 from this beautiful book of mine. And chapter 10 is called Feminine Wisdom, Yoni Womb Cyclicity. If you don't know what Yoni means, it's the Sanskrit word. It means sacred gateway, and it's used to describe the beautiful vulva, vagina, and uterus of the woman. So feminine wisdom, yoni womb cyclicity. What do you need to know, man or men, about this if you're interested in loving your women, your woman, deeper and connecting and understanding with her better? This is a really potent, powerful, and important topic and of course, women, if you're watching live as well, super, super welcome. I'm sure I'll share some nuggets of wisdom for you too. So, as I've explained in some of the former lives, but I'll assume you haven't watched them, and if you do want to watch them, they're all on my YouTube channel, Shakti Sundari, by the way. The patriarchal way of thinking and structuring the world and the universe tends to separate things and put them into distinct boxes and groups. And so the patriarchal frame for understanding the body, physiology, sexuality, has separated woman from um, body and good from bad and sex from spirit and um, reproduction from sexuality. So things are separated out, right? But that's completely false in terms of how a woman experiences her body, her sexuality. It's all connected. And important, super important elements of this for a woman are her yoni, her womb, and the fact that she is cyclical. She is cyclical, which means that she menstruates in the sort of the period of time from when she goes into menarche, which is the word to define when she starts her periods, and at the bleeding times all the way through to menopause, she is a cyclical being. She has a cycle typically on average, but obviously every woman varies, of bleeding, menstruating every 28 days. Every woman's cycle is unique, but that is the, you know, that's the typical. And guess what? That cycle is directly connected to the cycles of the moon. In yoga and tantra cosmology, we associate the feminine with the moon and the masculine with the sun. And that's one of the reasons for it. We are directly through our bodies connected to the cycles of nature and the moon, the lunar cycles, the tides literally the tides of the oceans. Our bodies are, um, I can't remember the exact percentage, so please correct me if I'm wrong, but I know it's at least 70% water, maybe it's 80% water. So of course, if you imagine that we are governed by these tides, our bodies are primarily water, imagine how that's gonna affect our emotions, our tides of being. Connected to these cycles are hormonal fluctuations, estrogen, progesterone, um, FSH, and other uh, testosterone as well. We have all of these hormones that are magical in that they support our body to move through this cycle every month where the womb builds a, a bloody, tissuey, um, spongy lining ready to support uh, a baby if it is made. So, we, you know, our, our um, ovaries release an egg and the lining of the womb builds up. The egg travels down the fallopian tubes. I know you know all this stuff, but there's a reason why I'm telling you. And then it comes into the womb space and 
it may or may not get fertilized, but if it does, of course, it implants into that spongy lining of the womb, which is there creating a beautiful nest and home for this cell um, to, to become a human being, or there's no fertilization. And so then that blood, that cell, that lining of the uterus is released in menstruation. Okay, so it's a beautiful, natural, cyclical, organic process. The body is so intelligent and so wise and so cosmically creative and so much directly a part of the cycles and seasons of nature and mother earth women who are in tune with this aspect of their beings not every woman is and a lot of women are not because we live in such a patriarchal culture where there has been an encouragement um, of a disconnect from this uh, natural aspect of our being but when we are connected we're very much attuned to our flow we're very much empowered we're very much grounded we're very much able to pick up intuitively on signs and signals from nature and the universe we feel complete and whole we feel connected and we go through shifts so this is a very natural part of being cyclical that our energy opens and closes. We feel more sexually open at different times of the month. Obviously, when we're most fertile, it's purely biology, we are most open and flirtatious. It's biology at this point, okay? So we move through different stages, being more open, more closed, more inwards, more outwards. Naturally, we're more inwards when we're bleeding. When we're bleeding, we tend to be connected to, if we're aware, a lot of women aren't, of what we are releasing. That blood is basically a letting go of the past month. It is a time to go inwards, to meditate, to reflect, to be conscious of what we're releasing from that past month. That's why in ancient cultures, women would retreat to um, the red tent to bleed together because in those kinds of matriarchal or traditional cultures, women would very typically all be bleeding at the same time and they would retreat to the red tent where they didn't have to cook, clean, take care of anybody and all they had to do was bleed, eat good food, rest, sleep and of course talk amongst themselves which um, when you're bleeding is a very mystical, magical time. It's when the veils between this world and other worlds are thinnest and our psychic ability is heightened. Okay, so this just gives you a little bit of an insight into the experience of being a woman. And one um, sort of one framework for understanding this that is typically taught to women for understanding themselves because this understanding has been lost is um, the triple goddess or the four, four part goddess of course this is just a very simple schema to break things down they're not really this clear cut but it might help you to understand that we divide our 28 day cycle into four phases and we associate this with different elements of womanhood as well. The maiden, the mother, or the creatrix, the maga, and the crone. And so we're going through this cycle of womanhood every month where the maiden, the energy, is youthful, energetic, uh, idealistic, outwards going, playful, joyful, energetic, right? The first stage of the cycle. The second part, the mother or the creatrix, then we are fully blossoming, we are blooming, we are luscious, we are abundant, ripe, juicy, okay? The maga is the third part where this would correspond to your perimenopausal years. So we're beginning to go more inwards, we're beginning to lose touch with that totally youthful, vital aspect. And this is reflected for every woman, whatever her age, at this part in her cycle as we're coming closer to our bleeding time. And then the final part of that 28-day cycle, but also our life cycle, is the crone time, which is the bleeding time, which is where we go inwards, where there is a dying off, where there is a releasing. This is the cycle we go through every month. And of course, not every woman bleeds in 28-day cycles and some women don't bleed, but I'm just talking in generalizations. 
So there are times when our emotions are naturally more at the surface. There are times when we feel emotions naturally more deeply, where we're just prone to crying for no reason at all or watching something, a soppy movie and just be floods and tears. There are times when we feel really um, confident and outgoing and sexually proactive. There are times when we feel much more introverted and receptive and quiet. This is natural. Every woman who is in tune with her cycles will know this and be aware of it. But a lot of women are not aware of it and are not connected, but they're still going through the cycles, but they're not going through the cycles with awareness. But one really important thing is that this aspect of womanhood has been demeaned, has been demonized and has been shamed. And that's one reason why women don't want to or aren't connected with their cyclicity and with the power of their womb and their sacred yoni. Because of the shaming, the blaming, the demeaning, the judging, the laughing at, the making a mockery of, okay? Um, telling a woman that she is hysterical when she's feeling emotions telling her that she's crazy because she's psychic or intuitive, telling her that she's a witch, burning her at the stake because she has intuitive gifts and knows how to make medicine with herbs and elixirs, right? This is a long centuries old history that women have experienced because of their simplicity and because of the power of their womb space, their sexual energy, and their sacred gateway, their yoni. So for every woman, there is a reclamation of this feminine wisdom that needs to happen if she wants to live in true connection with her authentic essence and divine feminine self. And it can often feel like going against the tide because it is so little understood in the mainstream. I mean, you know, just yesterday I was listening to um, Woman's Hour um, on Radio 4 and, you know, there was this talk of um, HRT for the menopause and, you know, as if it's some great, great thing. And I'm like, well, women have been menstruating and bleeding since the beginning of time. Um, they've been going through this transition from, um, you know, menstruating to menopause since the beginning of time. And suddenly, only now, in the year 2022, there's, you know, the capacity to talk about it publicly. But it's still a topic that is surrounded by mystery and shame and misunderstanding and disconnect. Um, I do wholeheartedly believe, as a result of my own research and experience, that when we are more in tune with our bodies and our cycles and our sexuality... Um, that the need for these kinds of synthetic hormones would not be as great. I do believe that the demand for such synthetic hormones as a form of treatment is a result of living in a very stressful, patriarchal world that doesn't understand and accept and celebrate the feminine wisdom, the feminine body and the feminine way. That is not to say that it is not a great relief for some women. I don't want to make anyone feel shamed or judged. The thing to also understand is that for a woman, because of all of this, her sexuality is not separate from her menstruation. It is not separate from her role as a mother. Um, it is not separate from her time in perimenopause or menopause. It is all connected. You cannot separate a woman's sexuality from where she is in her life cycle and where she is in her cycle. They are all directly connected. And if you as a man understand this and bring um, compassion and care and presence, she will love you so much. She will open to you so much. But when you shame, I had one client, for example, who was on my Awakening Shakti course and her husband used to refer to her menstruation, her period, I can't actually remember the word that he used now, but it was the most demeaning, 
disgusting word that he used to refer to her when she was bleeding. I mean, please, men, please. This um, gift of menstruation is connected to our capacity to create life, to birth a new human being through our bodies. It is divine. Our blood is divine. Our orgasms are divine and they are both connected. Our capacity to create new life is directly connected to our cyclicity. So this aspect of our being as women is to be profoundly revered, honored, bowed down to, and I mean that sincerely, like hands in prayer pose at your heart, bowing down to this mystery, how a woman embodies the divine energy of the feminine, the cosmic energy of creativity, the capacity to birth new life. Wow, how holy, how magical, how profound. We are the carriers of that code of creation. And in the world today and throughout the centuries, this has not been honored and respected apart from in a few very small areas where it has. Into menarche. This is a potent initiation for every young woman. This time when she steps from being a girl to a woman, it's such a huge change. It is to be honored consciously, to be supported and respected and celebrated. At the moment, for most young girls in the world today, I'm very sad to say, their transition into bleeding is covered with shame, disgust, secrecy. This time is not hurt. This time is to be honored, supported, give her information, love her, celebrate her, welcome her into womanhood. Guide her with your love as a father, your pride, your celebration, your honoring of her stepping into womanhood, not by telling her to be afraid of her sexuality and warning her of all the things that could go wrong, but by honoring her, celebrating her, giving her books, educating her, acknowledging her as now a woman. Of course, that transition actually takes years to fully embody. It's such a delicate time for young girls, such a delicate time. And the way that you as a father, as a brother, as a man, as a boy, as a friend, talk to your, any teenage girl who's going through this time, you will make a huge impression upon her in a way that will affect her sexuality for the rest of her life. Impact. The way you look at her, the way you speak to her, the way you objectify her or not will be logged in her subconscious and affect her capacity to enjoy her sexuality for the rest of her life. Do you want her to be open, to be confident, to enjoy and relish her sexuality as a gift for herself? Or do you want her to feel objectified, ashamed, like she has to put her body on display for you. What do you want, really and truly, right? The second big initiation, motherhood. Again, so little understood. Our bodies go through such immense hormonal, physical, physiological changes through pregnancy, childbirth and beyond. Educate yourselves, guys. Read about it. Be there to support her. Ask her what she needs. Be compassionate, be present. We can still be super juicy and super sexual throughout pregnancy with the right approach and understanding. And postpartum, it's very normal not to feel sexual because we are in pain probably. Our bodies are recovering, our yonis are recovering, right? They need time to heal. We need time to bond with our babies. But if you can really understand that change that transition that shift with love and compassion and patience and presence know that we will open to you again 
if you are understanding that our needs now may be different, that the approach needed might now be different, that we will likely be very tender and sensitive, particularly in our breast and our yoni. But there are ways that you can and we can connect and have intimacy and pleasure together that don't necessarily involve penetration, that don't necessarily involve going straight for intercourse, right? And that loving us, holding us, cuddling us, stroking us is a beautiful part of foreplay that doesn't necessarily have to lead to an end result, okay? The third and final powerful initiation that's a vital part of our cyclicity and our feminine wisdom you know, because these initiation, these gateways of, of menarche, of motherhood and menopause connect us ever more deeply with our feminine power and our feminine wisdom if we are aware of it and if we're open to it. Of course, for a lot of women it hasn't and it doesn't because there is this shutting down because of the patriarchy, but these are powerful portals of connecting to the goddess and to the divine feminine and to our own inner divine feminine essence menopause another big shift the veils thin again we step out of bleeding we step more fully into our power into our power into our wisdom into our intuition into our wholeness into our confident being this time of life for so many women again has been shrouded and surrounded by shame demeaning comments our bodies change you know i just want to be really um grounded about it we sprout hairs in places that we don't necessarily want to right things change in our bodies our skin becomes less elastic if we're not actively toning our yoni she can change in sensitivity she will need perhaps extra lubrication um, but we can still continue to be multi-orgasmic all, all kinds of things with the right care with the right attention with the right understanding that time of menopause is a powerful, powerful change. Again, if walked through with awareness, it will be an empowering experience for a woman. If there is not awareness, it can be very, very difficult and very, very challenging, both physically, physiologically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. Whatever has been <clears throat> unresolved from our time of menarche will resurface during menopause for healing. So whatever hasn't been dealt with will come back at that time and give the woman another opportunity to heal herself and to integrate and to claim her full power as a woman. You can support this process with your love, your compassion, your understanding, with the understanding that we still want to be touched, maybe in a different way, ask questions, ask how you can support but please do not shame please do not denigrate please do not make wrong we're already feeling when we're going through menopause so confused so alienated suddenly everything's haywire our cycle goes out of whack our emotions are even more heightened we can be moody this is part of that transition it doesn't mean we hate you and in fact we would love you to be alongside us supporting us for this journey with your awareness and your presence Everything is connected. And if you as a man are able to bring an understanding of that, we're gonna love you. We're gonna love you so much more. We're gonna to open to you. We're gonna celebrate you. We're gonna be so grateful to you for understanding and being able to bring your love, compassion and presence to these powerful changes. And of course, if you understand and know this, you can support your partner. I have a friend, uh, a male friend, who encourages his partners to um, get one of those uh, period tracking apps so that they can track her cycle together and be aware of it because then with awareness there's understanding with a lack of awareness there can be a lack of understanding or a misunderstanding if you know she's you know and if she's aware like oh this is the time when i tend to be like this then you can both navigate that with more awareness if you know this is the time when she is fertile you can navigate that with awareness and play with it particularly if you're wanting to create a child and also you can then use natural um, birth control um, because you're both aware of her cycle. And understanding actually as another part of this that the secretions from her yoni naturally change during her cycle. They get thicker, they get thinner, they change color. 
and this is all normal and natural. So it's good to understand that. And again, women have often felt a lot of shame about discharge and it's a very natural, normal, healthy thing for every woman to experience, okay? So we wanna clear any shame around that out. Um, just gonna check my notes and see if there's anything that I've missed. Um, no, I don't think I have. So feminine wisdom, yoni, womb, simplicity. It's all connected. Our moon cycle connected with nature, the earth, mother nature, the cycles of the seasons, the cycles of the seasons, the cycles of our lifetime. It's all connected. Our sexuality, our fertility, our reproduction, it's all connected. It is not separate. Learn to understand this about us, celebrate this with us, support us in our cycles, and there would be so much more peace, harmony, and love in the world. Honor her initiations, honor her transitions. They are such powerful, potent moments for every woman to more fully embody her power and true goddess essence. And I, for one, invoke and invite a world where every woman knows this power within her body and her being and where every man celebrates her, supports her in this. That. I really hope this, hope this sharing has been helpful, informative, educational, stimulating. <laughs> Post your questions below if you've got them. Share the video if you know people would like to watch this back. I will upload it to my YouTube channel um, to join all the others so you can go and watch the whole series there as I do them. We've still got uh, nine more um, chapters to go through, so more juicy uh, lives to come as they come. And if you, uh, man or woman, want to work with me, I host two monthly online groups. One is the Tantric Temple, which is a mixed group online every month. Next one is in May and that's so that's for men and women and then there is a woman only group called the rapture study group which of course is all about the beautiful practices that this book has because this book isn't just a book to read it's a book full of practices for women to connect more deeply with their feminine body energy yoni womb cyclicity and <laughs> empowerment so every month i also do an online women's group the rapture study group and the next one of those is tomorrow actually wednesday the 27th I think it is of um, April 7 to 9 p.m. UK time. I'll pop the link for those things below but of course you can write a comment, you can reach out to me if you've got any questions and I do also work one-to-one -one with men and women around these kinds of areas and issues so reach out if you're wanting to inquire about that. I think that's it for now. Um, oh I'm going to delete those comments from this person who's just commenting. Horrible comments, I'll get rid of those. Thank you everybody else for watching. Much love. Namaste.